Most people spend a huge amount of time proving to others and often to themselves that they are righteous or they are strong or they are brave or they are successful or all these other things. They're always proving that they are everything they want to be right now and they're proving to everybody else because they want to seem that way. They want to seem that way to everybody else and they want to seem that way to themselves and it's absolutely killing them. It's destroying their chances for success because everybody who is on this earth is imperfect. We're all lacking in enormous ways and if we try to prove that we're stronger than we are, then uh, when somebody comes along and offers us a chance to actually get stronger, if somebody criticizes us, right? If somebody criticizes you, that is an opportunity for you to improve. And yeah, sometimes people's criticisms are wrong, but if they're wrong, why do we take them so emotionally? Why do we get defensive? Who cares if they're wrong? Just don't listen to it, right? I mean, if somebody, some drunk on the street comes up to you and says that the sky is purple, are you gonna get offended by that? No, you're gonna recognize that it's wrong and you're gonna move on. Well, if we are honest with ourselves and if we are doing what is in our own best interest, then we will do the same thing when somebody says something critical of us that is wrong. We will recognize that it is wrong and we will ignore it. We'll smile at the person and wish them the best. Or maybe, you know, if we're trying to help that person, we will, we will uh, graciously tell them why they're wrong and how they can be correct. And you know, we can learn from anybody. It's very difficult if you have a lot of pride because, you know, you can learn from a five-year-old child. But if you're an adult and this is a five-year-old child, you don't want to admit that this child knows something that you don't. You can learn from some crazy homeless drunk on the street. Again, if you have the humility to admit that you do not know everything, then you can learn from anyone. You can learn so much faster, you can learn so much better, and your life will be better as a result. Pride is killing you and humility opens the door to so many opportunities in your life. You know, we're so afraid of humility because humility sounds like humiliation, right? But humiliation doesn't exist with humility. It's almost the opposite. Humility is like the armor that protects against humiliation because you can only be humiliated if you have lifted yourself high. If you are full of pride, then somebody comes and knocks you down and that's what we call humiliation. But if you are already put yourself in that low place, then you can't possibly be humiliated. It's impossible. It's like that parable that Jesus told about, said that, that if, you, if you go to a wedding, and you sit at the very front of the wedding. You make yourself great. You are proud. You are putting yourself in the higher position. Then the people will come and they will knock you out of that position. They'll, they'll kick you out of those seats and say, no, you go, you go back. You're not that important. But if you put yourself at the back of the seats, if you put yourself at the back of the room, then they will come to you and they will bring you forward. If you want to be humiliated, then have pride. If you want to be glorified, then have humility. Jesus said that pride cometh before a fall, which is self-evidently true because the more pride you have, the more inflated a sense of ego that you have built for yourself, the more vulnerable that you are. It's just a matter of time before somebody comes with a little pin and pokes that giant balloon of ego that you've inflated for yourself. And you fall down and you're on the floor, humiliated your life destroyed because you've built this giant statue to yourself. You have glorified yourself and now when reality comes in, punches you in the face. But contrast that with the other way, with the way of humility. You never try to prove yourself. You don't try to act like you're better than somebody else, not anybody else. Even the homeless drunk on the street, you treat yourself as his equal. Well then, Nobody's ever going to come with the pin because there's nothing to pop. Nothing is overinflated. And everybody will want to be your friend because you have humility, which means that you learn. It means that you grow. You become this great person, and yet you don't act like it. You don't act like you're super proud of yourself. So everybody's a little mystified. They're like, this guy is so amazing. He acts like he's nothing. 
And what do those people want to do? Well, they want to lift you up. There is always a balance in life. If you try to lift yourself up beyond where you actually deserve to be, the forces of this universe, including the psychological forces that exist in people's brains, are going to see that and they are going to want to bring you down. And by the same token, if you treat yourself like you're nothing, you don't believe that you're nothing, see yourself as you actually are. You don't act superior to anyone. You treat everyone as your equal. People will recognize your incredible qualities and they will want to lift you up. The balancing forces of the universe, instead of trying to knock you down, they will lift you up. So if you want to be lifted up, if you want to learn and you want to grow as fast as it is possible to do in this life, then get rid of your stupid pride. Replace it with humility. We have a tendency towards pride. It's part of our nature. I don't know why that is. I don't know where it comes from. It's part of our fallen nature. And as, as we evolve as human beings, as we get better morally and spiritually, that pride slowly starts to dissipate. Maybe at the early stages, we just recognize it. We recognize that when we act based on pride rather than based on something worthwhile, then we recognize when we fail to act because of pride. Pride will stifle you. Pride will paralyze you. How many people are afraid to do anything because if they fail, it will hurt their pride? You can't do anything. You can't go outside of your little tiny box prison that you've put yourself in if you have too much pride. I know because I was in that situation. I couldn't do anything out of the ordinary. I couldn't do anything that I deemed even the tiniest bit outside of what was socially acceptable. Why? Because people might see that and they might think badly of me. Because it might hurt my pride. Because my pride was so inflated, I had to tiptoe in order to avoid anybody that might have a little pin. It's a horrible way to live. I don't recommend it to anybody. Once you stop, once you realize that you don't have to prove yourself, you exist as you exist, and what other people think of you, or even what you think of yourself, it's not really that important. And as with everything, that ties into spirituality. You exist and you have value because you were created by God. You don't have to be the strongest. You don't have to be the smartest. You don't even have to be the most righteous. The fact that you were created by God means that you have value. You have an incredible, enormous amount of value. And you, d you don't ever have to question that. If you believe that, then why would you ever have to try to prove yourself? So I promise you this. If you can get rid of your pride, get rid of it completely and replace it with humility, your life will get so much better, so much faster, you won't even recognize yourself a year from now. So how do you do it? How do you get rid of your pride? Well, the first thing is to recognize it. Know why you do what you do and why you feel what you feel. If you feel insecure about something, why? Why do you feel insecure? Well, chances are you feel insecure because you recognize that there is a risk of hurting your pride. So when you feel that, recognize that this risk is not a risk that matters at all. You are humble. You have no need to prove yourself. So if somebody sees you in a negative light, it doesn't matter. So just do the thing that you want to do. Quit feeling that oppressive insecurity because it's not serving you. And everything you do and everything you feel, figure out why. I mean, you spend 20 hours a week in the gym, is it serving you? I'm not saying that going to the gym is a bad thing, I'm just saying it's the reason. Are you trying to be healthy? Are you trying to be strong for some legitimate purpose? Or are you just trying to look strong in the eyes of other people so that you can feel good about yourself? It's for you to answer, not for me. But if you recognize that you're doing it for the sake of pride, well, maybe you could stop. And maybe you could put that time and energy into doing something that's serving you. Maybe something that's serving your actual purpose on this earth, rather than just trying to make yourself look cool. Don't you think that would be worthwhile? Don't you think you would get so much more done 
if you stop putting effort into things that you would only ever do to make yourself feel good? What do you think your life would look like if you did that? So you can recognize when you're doing things because of pride. You can also recognize when you're failing to do things because of pride. A lot of people are scared to death about starting a business. No, that's what they want to do. Or maybe they want to be an athlete. Or maybe they, they have a message that they want to share with the world. But as soon as they get in front of a camera, they feel awkward. They feel like, I'm going to look like an idiot. I'm going to sound like an idiot uh, if I'm in front of the camera. I feel awkward talking to an object. And I don't want to put it out there because people might think poorly of me. Believe me, I know the feeling. But why would you let that limit your life? Recognize when you're failing to do something that you want to do, that you know you need to do, because of pride. Recognize that and then do the thing anyway. It'll make you a little uncomfortable at first. I'm not saying that just recognizing it will make it disappear in a poof of smoke. Absolutely not. But the more you practice, the better you'll get at it. And the more you'll notice your pride start to wisp away like the mist. And the better your life will become. Oh, I used to say that you need to fake it until you make it. That you need to act like you have everything together. And then people will see that you act like you have everything together. They will treat you accordingly, and then eventually you will get everything together. You will be successful because you, you tricked people into thinking you were already successful. Well, uh, I don't believe that anymore. In fact, I think it's quite the opposite. I think that if you are inauthentic, people can see it from a mile away. And if you are authentic, if you can get rid of your pride, you can be confident with nothing. You can be confident in yourself just the way that you are now. You don't need to build up an image. You don't need to impress anybody. Just act the way that you naturally want to act. You will have confidence. You don't need pride. Pride and honor it seems it's a, such a concept that we've built up in our heads as a society, but it's only holding us back. And as soon as you recognize that, the sooner your life will improve and it will improve dramatically. Now, if you appreciated this video, please hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, hit the little bell icon beside the subscribe button so you don't miss anything, and check out this video. I think you'll find it interesting also. Till next time.